That's crazy what happened, and you were personally affected, right? Yes, I was actually uh, one of the people being stuck at the airport in Atlanta, yes. <laughs> That's crazy. It all started, uh, I was actually on a working vacation in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and uh, I got the news, you know, earlier than he, obviously, uh, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. drinking coffee, and I saw the news, and I immediately noticed, I said, wow, this is going to be a big one. So I reposted that right away to inform everybody. But it's, it's amazing what can happen when these things uh, go wrong. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to a very exciting podcast episode. Today, we are kicking off Tech Talk, a brand new segment brought to you by My Living Media and ACT Computers. Join us as we deep dive into the world of technology with our expert host, Jurgen Schwanitz, the CEO of ACT Computers. Thank you very much. I'm super excited to be here and starting off this amazing show with you. Uh, we'll be talking about technology every two weeks and i um, glad to be at this really amazing studio at My Living Media. Thank Thanks, you. Jurgen. We're very excited for this partnership. I'm super excited to kind of learn more, you know, about technology and things going on in our world. And if you want to just kind of let people know what we're going to be talking about today, that'd be great. Yes. I mean, it's the show is called uh, Tech Talk. And so the most important thing we'll be talking about right now is what happened in the global IT disaster from, what was it, two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. So I think everybody was affected by it. Did you have any problems yourself? Or? So I personally didn't. Um, so I kind of like looked into what happened. Obviously, I saw all over social media. Um, but it's crazy what happened, and you were personally affected, right? Yes, I was actually uh, one of the people being stuck at the airport in Atlanta, yes. <laughs> That's crazy. It all started, uh, I was actually on a working vacation in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and uh, I got the news, you know, earlier than he, obviously, uh, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. drinking coffee, and I saw the news, and I immediately noticed, I said, wow, this is going to be a big one. So I reposted that right away to inform everybody. But it's, it's amazing what can happen when these things uh, go wrong. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. Luckily, here at our office, we didn't have anything happen. I know it could have affected some of the vendors we use, but I didn't see anything. But it's just crazy how, yeah, one thing goes wrong. It's like a domino effect. Right, right. And so we're here to uh, educate the public, obviously, to let them know what happened. Uh, there are many different, uh, you know, news talks and media streams about this. Some are not really correct. So I just like, like to get, give you the perspective of a uh, uh, technical perspective and actually really what happened. So uh, anyway, what did happen is that um, there's a company out there called C CrowdStrike. Mm -hmm. And uh, that company is monitoring and preventing problems all around the world for large organizations, companies, airplanes, companies, uh, airlines, whatever you can think of. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to keep them, keep them safe from being any kind of... Uh, intrusion from bad actors from overseas, hacking jobs, any kind of things like that. Mm -hmm. Problem is this time uh, when they pushed out or sent out an update, that's an easy way to say this, mm -hmm. that update was faulty. Oh gosh. Yes. And um, these things that would do happen in industry, but uh, this is the first time I believe ever that I've seen one that bad. So with a faulty update, what happened? Did it almost let this program's guards down and all of this information was accessible? Like what, what happened with this faulty update? Well, the update prevented computers from working, oh, God. So which yeah. was the worst part. So you have to imagine that you have a working machine now, mm -hmm. just like in your, in your business here. And all of a sudden, next day you come to work and it's not working anymore. And uh, immediately you have to find a resolution for that. So, and uh, this was affecting everything, like I said, worldwide. Um, so this update is, uh, was sent out without really testing it this time. So normally when you send out updates, like my company, we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We uh, sent out one update to ourselves, test it out in the lab to make sure it works. And then you send it out gradually throughout all your customer base. But this time it was somebody pushed a big button and sent it out around the world to have this update done. So when the machines actually became unusable. Um, you might have seen something on the computer that looks like a blue screen, right? Mm -hmm. Blue screen of death, they call it. Yeah. BSOD in industry. And uh, that was causing major panic everywhere. 
gosh. So do you think they handled, how do you think they handled, you know, this issue? Did they handle it in a responsible way after, you know, they realized what had happened? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I, I watched just about everything. I, I can watch what happened afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, uh, the uh, explanation, the CEO's explanation was just a lot of talking mm -hmm. and excusing, but, mm -hmm. uh, that's something you don't do in the industry. Um, that's uh, very, that's unforgivable. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in my, in my, my, my book. So they have to find a way to rectify that. Mm -hmm. But the damage this caused worldwide in monetary damages and outages is so high, I don't know how any insurance company will cover this. Yeah. This is just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so like, is there any, was there any like major data loss with this happening or? No like, data loss. It's okay. actually, what happened is the bad update was pushed out, was sent out and made the machines not function anymore. So you have to imagine machines at the airport that are running the displays that showing the flight times that in, in, in movie theaters and wherever you can think of yeah. screens and, and servers are down. Yeah. And, uh, the, the have to go there manually. That was the only fix for a lot of these problems. Mm -hmm. When these machines blue screen, when the computer blue screens, you cannot access it anymore remotely. Mm -hmm. So all that remote work they were doing doesn't work anymore for machine doesn't accept the command anymore. So now. It's up to technicians like us, like normal technicians, to go on a ladder and go up there and actually fix the computer that's high up in the airport or somewhere manually, yeah. each and every one around the world. So you can imagine the kind of, uh, I, I feel bad for a lot of technicians who had to work that weekend or they probably didn't get any sleep. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think about even here, you know, when I started a year ago, I remember we had like some type of outage with our server. Mm -hmm. And it, it's crazy. It makes you realize how much we depend on technology. But just for an hour, you know, it's like, what do I do? I can't use the right. computer. But, you know, they were able to come in and it was fixed very quick. But how long did this outage affect? Like, how long did it impact airlines? Was it for just that day? Was it a couple oh, days? A couple of days and um, still going on right now. Um, and they're still restoring machines worldwide. I mean, the, the major part of the problem has been resolved. Mm -hmm. Luckily, uh, Microsoft... Uh, jumped, uh, you know, to the solution right away and brought out a fix that everybody could implement in the system and brought machines back quickly. Mm -hmm. But you still had to have manpower. You still had to go from from machine to machine, which you can't access them remotely. Um, I like to go back a little bit. Why actually this is happening? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in the old days you had something called break fix. Okay, that's how we started off our company. We were a computer store, break fix store. We something breaks, we fix it. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's a prevention, uh, the way you do business. Like, you, you know, we monitor businesses, we make sure everything's running, you don't get affected by viruses, we prevent problems that are kind of happening. Very similar to looking at the dashboard in your car. You know, it tells you you're going to need an oil change. It tells you all these things. You don't have to worry anymore, okay? That's what we do nowadays. But you have to think about it. The industry has their fingers in all these different computers and industries. And if something goes wrong, it goes wrong majorly bad. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. So has anything like this ever happened before? I know they're saying this is like a historic outage, obviously, because it was huge. But has there ever been, you know, a situation like this before? Yes. On a smaller scale, yes. Okay. And that happens quite often. I mean, you just don't hear about it on the news. You don't hear these things. I mean, there's things going wrong all the time in computers and technology. Because nowadays, as you know, it's running our lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, it is out and you cannot use it. You realize it's it's very important. Yeah. I was going to go back to um, also technically what actually caused this. Mm -hmm. um, so when a machine boots up, when a computer boots up, it runs an operating system. In this case, it's Windows. Mm -hmm. Okay, Windows Server, <laughs> Windows uh, regular op operating system. And when it boots up, it runs through your desktop, you can move your mouse and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. At that time, your computer is accessible. You can use it. But this uh, um, update went in before that, mm -hmm. before the machine can actually boot up to the desktop and actually be accessible remotely or accessible to anybody. So that's why they were all down. And the reason why that happened is because uh, back in 2009, a long time ago, uh, Microsoft had a big problem as an antitrust uh, uh, lawsuit mm -hmm. with the uh, European Union. 
And uh, they were forced to open up their operating system. They were forced to make it so that other companies can do updates, mm -hmm. can get in the system before the machine is ready for the user or ready to be accepted by remote access. Mm -hmm. And that's a bit of a problem. Um, when you look at other companies like Apple, for example, Apple doesn't have those problems because he never were affected in these kind of lawsuits. Uh, they're very protected. They don't let anybody in their system. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't hear these things from Apple. But Windows is a good operating system. Microsoft is doing a great job, but they were forced to do this a long time ago. Yeah, so why? what were the exact reasonings again? Like, why did they want that? to? If it's something that is, it's looked down upon, right? Like, it's not something that someone would want. Why would they... Well, it was for a fair market. So they wanted to make sure that other companies can compete and work with Microsoft. And they were kind of worried that Microsoft was taking over, being completely dominant in the market, which they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. But they had to open it up to a level that allowed these companies to work with them and update, and, and which is okay. Mm -hmm. But I believe in that they should protect it even more. I believe really... In the next couple of years, you're going to see uh, Windows evolving to a point where this is not going to happen again. Yeah. And when did that happen? Was that back in 2000? 2009. Okay. Yeah, because I saw that on your email. And I personally have never, obviously, I'm not as much into the tech world as you are, but I found that very interesting because I'd never, I didn't know that was. Yeah, most people don't know these things and they don't talk about the news either. And it's so easy to blame Microsoft always, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. so with CrowdStrike, are they, you know, are they going to face any type of like legal repercussions? Like how does that work as, you know, a business that has such a big platform and they cause a huge outage like this? Well, obviously I'm not a lawyer, but <laughs> I can tell you that uh, something like this, I would be hiding underneath the table <laughs> <laughs> if I was a CEO. <laughs> so um, I'm sure there's a big fallout of it, and that's just coming. I know uh, Delta Airlines is, uh, they publicly announced they're going to go through the lawsuit against them. So... And that'll be the first one. That won't be the last one either. Because, um, again, these companies lost a lot of money because of this. Yeah. And you think about it, you know, it, the company has lost, you know, a large amount of money. But then you also think about the public and, you know, how oh, yeah. it's scary. It, it makes you it is a wake up call that we really do depend on technology. And it's just when one thing goes wrong, you know, I read something that someone's heart surgery, a life saving surgery it had to be canceled because of this. Yes. Hospitals shut down. Uh, who knows? Maybe some people even had, uh, you know, had medical problems because of this. Yeah. Uh, it's all around the world. But this isn't the first time this happened. I mean, uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, a couple of months ago, maybe six, seven months ago, we had a major disaster around America too with billing problems for the medical system. That was another thing where doctors couldn't do prescriptions, couldn't do uh, any kind of operations. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing because nowadays and that's the only way you can actually do it all these systems are so interconnected if they go down and you are only relying on one system to run your whole entire business and you're out of business yeah <laughs> yeah and i mean i love technology i'm 25 i've obviously grown up you know in this world of technology yeah, you just made me feel old <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's all i know so i i hate to say it but i obviously can't imagine a life without it because it's just always been a part of my life but mm. I think for companies like CrowdStrike, there there does need to be better operations in place if things like this happen because it's. Yeah. I think they'll continue to happen. It's just what, how they, I guess, manage it. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot more oversight about these things in the future. Yeah. I mean, certain countries, for example, weren't affected by this. Mm -hmm. Like China wasn't affected by this because they're not running CrowdStrike. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, when we started off with computers back in 1994, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing this since I was six years old. Um, computers were so primitive, and you know, we didn't have internet yet. We had to dial up uh, bulletin board services, so none of these things uh, existed at the time. So, the 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 thing is with the industry, if you look at it, the progress that the IT industry is doing or the te technologies, how fast it's evolving, is so fast. It's always much faster than the actual security behind it. Security is always lacking. It's always on the back burner, and something goes wrong, it goes wrong quick. Mm -hmm. You know, and the way you can prevent these things um, from happening is obviously pick a good company, but then also do your own 
uh, research and have your own way of restoring your system. Um, that's one of the things I've seen why this was such a big deal around the world. So companies are relying so much on something like CrowdStrike mm -hmm. and they think, oh, everything's cool, cool now. We don't have to worry about anything anymore. Yeah. And then they might uh, not invest so much money or in, into their own IT infrastructure, mm -hmm. but they need to. Yeah. And this is not a sales pitch for me, but in general, they need to do that. Um, like Europe is a lot better with these things, a lot more preventative. But here, we need to be more preventative about that kind of thing. Yeah. And if you had, just imagine this, if you had a way of restoring all these computers as a company yourself mm -hmm. quickly, within a couple of minutes, then you would have no problems at all. Wow. So you're saying people technically, they could have fixed the issue. Yes, they could. Wow. If they had systems in place like we normally use, mm -hmm. on, on, we're a much smaller company, obviously, that allow you to, um, to restore a system uh, if it goes wrong on, or, or through your own means, yeah. through your own IT staff can restore your network very quickly then you wouldn't have these problems right away. Wow, yeah, see, because I'm that person that would probably just think to rely on CrowdStrike, but it is important for business owners to know they should have those, have an IT team behind them that can help fix these issues. Right, they, and you, they need, uh, you need redundancy always. Uh, you need a, a backup, more than one backup. And nowadays we have, there's no excuse anymore really. Nowadays we have systems that can restore a computer, let's say this notebook right now with blue screen on me, I could restore that machine in probably about 30 seconds myself. And it doesn't matter who messed it up, I can restore myself within 30 seconds. And because I have software installed that allows me to do this. So, you know, you can prevent a lot of things like that. Yeah. Wow. That is crazy. So do you think there will be, I mean, Crowd, CrowdStrike is obviously taking very bad press on this. Like people are going to look at them, you know, differently now. Do you think there will be another... Um, you know, program that will kind of take the light and will be used by these major airlines? Or do you think it will continue to be CrowdStrike? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Delta either, but I'm sure Delta is not going to use them anymore. That's, I, I think that's a pretty sure thing there. Uh, but I mean, there are many companies out there that do the same, that have the same kind of service. They're not the only game in town. There are much bigger ones too that can handle these things. So they might just jump ship just like this. You know, when one, one company messes up, then people move over to somebody else. That's that's how it has to be. But again, when you have a when you're running a business, redundancy is really, really important. You know, invest in your IT infrastructure so you can restore things yourself. Don't rely hundred percent on your monitoring company or your IT company. You need to have things systems in place you can work with yourself. And would you say that would be like your steps to preventing such a big outage in the future or you know, if we do have an outage like this in the future, that these businesses will then now be prepared. Yeah, exactly. Having a robust system for restoring, that's the first thing right there. If you can, if your IT staff can push one button and says, okay, we got 100 machines down, we can restore them right now remotely, done. So you could technically do that for us in here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can do that right now, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, so it was quite something. It was a very humbling moment when I saw that on TV uh, and I saw it on the news. Yeah, yeah. quite something. Especially for you to feel that personally, because I mean, I, I know we really are lucky with, you know, all the advancements of technology that we see and we get to use, even when it comes down to ordering a coffee online, because I saw that was apparently affected. And I feel like that's yeah, obviously everyone was affected, the yeah. least of the problems, you know, big problems, but it's just crazy and it really does open your eyes. I see... Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about a future topic. Uh, we've been talking about AI in one of the future shows um, coming up. We're going to have guests about that too. But uh, talking about artificial intelligence and how that can actually happen, how that can actually help in these situations. Um, we're going to see AI integrated into just about everything. Like my phone has, has AI on it now. I have a Samsung Galaxy 24. Dad has AI. I use it every day. Uh, my computer has AI for certain things I use it. But also you're gonna see AI being integrated into the operating system. Wow. So just imagine an operating system and I I talked to somebody at Microsoft about this. They kinda of didn't want to reveal it, but I think that's the roadmap right there. Is that they're gonna have AI integrated 
into the operating system so that Goodness. it's like a preventive, preventive measure so that the AI system protects itself. Mm-hmm. It's like a self-protection mechanism. Wow. So if the computer gets messed up or something's wrong, or even the user is doing something that they shouldn't be, that AI system is watching you and preventing this from happening. So you're going to see a lot of things like that down the road. Wow. Well, I am definitely looking forward to that episode. I mean, I I like AI. I will say my usage with it has been nothing but great. It is kind of crazy to, you know, see that that's where it could be going. I'm yeah. sure it will be because, you know, everything's advancing. But Yeah, yeah, me too, me too, yeah. I'm actually writing a book right now about... Uh, uh, technology and uh, ACD computers the beginning and all that and I'm using AI to dictate the book wow. while driving in my car Yeah, and it's putting it all together for me you know it, it's crazy I really say I, I believe AI can just it adds you know I, I'll write something and I like it and then I'm like well let me see what AI right. I, AI thinks right. and then it's like I'm taking what I personally want to say what AI wants to change putting it together and I feel like it's making it 10 times more creative. And right. I know some people have a negative outlook on it. Um, I don't know. I, I've just had positive experiences only. I think it it is kind of mind-blowing what it can do and what it will be able to do, but I'm I'm looking forward to hearing your episode on that. Yeah, same experience here. I mean, I, as you can tell, I have an accent. I'm from Germany originally, mm-hmm. so sometimes when I write something, it's not as perfect or gr- grammatically correct as in English as I want it to be. Mm-hmm. So AI helps me a lot. Yeah. It takes my, my stuff and changes it around, makes it more professional sounding. So it works quite well for that. And, you know, there are always naysayers, naysayers and bad reviews about things. AI is going to be a tool to us, just like you have check spelling yeah. on your computer to help you with your spelling. It's the same thing. It's an assistant. And if, we, if you've been using something like uh, Siri mm-hmm. on your phone for the last 10 years yeah. plus, you already used AI. Mm-hmm. It's just going to get more you know, better. That's all it is. Yeah. But uh, that's all I'm going to say now. I'm going to save that for the next topic. Yeah. Um, so uh, next week, we're actually going to have our next episode. We're going to have another guest on. Actually, two guests. Exciting. We're going to talk about uh, improving uh, your IT infrastructure at your business through hardware, mm-hmm. uh, through something called a router. I'll explain what that actually is. Mm-hmm. And we have two guests on from a company called Island. They produce some really amazing hardware, and I'm excited to have them. They're going to be on Zoom call, so they won't be here. So So great. Well, we're looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you so much for informing us on CrowdStrike and the major IT outage. Thank you. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye-bye.